No, he just said, right? <laughs> oh, might be the try to test it, yeah. Oh, that's the top five. The surgery's changed nothing. Shit, nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a second as well, Durka. Dominance at the start already. Hate that knife. Um, however, twist and bone cold and sender, what can you do? Yeah, tough to really crack back through here because Fnatic have been allowed to reset fully. Lots to deal with here, <laughs> Durka <laughs> continuing. Finds his third on the round now, potentially looking for the fourth as well. He actually is in a real position to do some damage for it too. Yeah, we know the vitality of Stahl. Give him the ace! Give him the ace! <laughs> the surgery was not successful. The man absolutely demolishing vitality round one. Challenge looks like towards Sender. He's in danger. He's going to say Does Sender has to get, to get out of this Careful, fast. Careful, the paranoia. Dirk has got, got two. two! How's he got two and a third? They can't stop winning everything they do. Even he's, he's surprised. Laughing. <laughs> the last round was ridiculous for Alpha to get two in that. And then Dirk has gone. I fancy a bit myself. A consolation at best here before still standing for Fnatic. Bladestorm on line now, Boaster one away for... Oh, two aces. I didn't even catch it on the mini map there. I think, yeah, it's garbage time. They're just... They're looking to try and save. But Dirk awarded his second here from Alpha. But is semi-committed towards this elbow hold. Yeah, it leaves him very little room to work. They are going to be close by to the site. Doesn't get revealed any of these pieces of utility that are put down here. This could be the problem. Angel going to be caught a little bit here. And actually, Chronicle, perfect timing. And Na'Vi fall like flies. Chronicle, insanity on the hold. Four gorgeous kills. And well, Na'Vi just looking lost. So welcome to part six of this 12-part series. And today, our team is Fnatic. And so we will talk about how Fnatic can win Masters Tokyo. Now, our picture today is of Durka. Uh, with hair and glasses. This is what Durka used to look like back at the first Masters Reykjavik. Looks very, very different, doesn't he? Which is kind of crazy. Um, kind of looks older and younger at the same time than he does right now, which is kind of an interesting, uh, you know, thing to pull off. Uh, but there it is. Uh, but anyway, moving on to the team and the coach. I'm sure many of you know the team pretty well, both to Leo, Alfia, Chronicle, and Durka, of course, with the Mini as the coach. Sorry about this Mini, this was the only uh, transparent picture I could find. Uh, but it does make you look small, which is kind of funny with the name, you know, yeah, it works pretty well. In terms of their ratings, though, and some of their stats, I mean, this is by far and away the, the highest, you know, numbers we've seen on this. And uh, for Paul Boaster here, who's sitting with a 157 ACS, it looks pretty bad, but it's because his teammates are just getting all these kills first. I mean, Durka's ACS is out of this world. His first kill to first death is out of this world. All of these ratings are out of this world. Obviously, it's Fnatic. They've been destroying for a large part, so it makes sense that these numbers are so absurd. When it comes to Fnatic's playstyle, the first thing we need to mention here is the fact that Fnatic are never out of a round because their players are too good. In fact, in this map alone against Team Liquid here on the first map of Lotus, there was multiple scenarios where they were multiple players down and still manage uh, to win the round. In this instance, it's going to be a 2v4, and not a 2v4 where, you know, a kill gets traded quickly and whatnot. No, this is just a straight-up 2v4, and uh, they still manage to win it, even on a pistol round. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of kind of crazy, to be honest. So, here we go, 2v4, and as I said, Fnatic, though, are never out of a round. Well, and him, I keep my Chronicles on the other side of the map, so unless something incredible happens here, this is looking wrapped up in round one, but again... Chronicle cook a little here. How much space can he take? The pause is enough to at least keep them guessing here. You can already see Solcast. He's wondering. conscious, but I don't think he's a well. Maybe actually oh, here coming back through to clear heaven. Oh, Chronicle oh, gets he's the better of him though. Yeah, okay. Not a single tag. Oh, it, he didn't take any yeah. damage. And now they've got a pretty decent post plant. This is something out of nothing. This is a 2v4. And they got some ground to cover. Redgar's going to be a minute or two to get there. He can try and apply some pressure. How's the one smoke? Down to 8 HP, but Safe still has the paint shells and the boom bot available here. It's definitely doable. Red guard, uh, actually giving away his position, I think, slightly. Chronicle's going to have heard that. Yeah, going to pop the wall back on up. Look for maybe a fair fight. And it looks like Yampi's the target! The clean pick for Chronicle. Oh, the second! Chronicle, beautiful work! Still got the snake bite to stall as well, Lauren. The time, time. is ticking away for Safe. 
only down to that paint shell now. Boombot Yu's gonna post it and hope for the best and pray! And no one's answering! Fnatic instantly put themselves on the board in an obscene pistol round. When it comes to Fnatic's attack side, I would say in general, you'll get quite a bit of this. A lot of defaulting, quite a few slow rounds, been somewhat on the map on other maps they do play a bit quicker but uh particularly here on lotus i mean i can't tell you how many times i have seen this uh 302 default that they run i mean it's just you know i i've must have seen it a million times at this point um but i'm going to show you this one because it has an interesting end to the round um but you'll see in this instance you know it doesn't actually go perfect redgar actually gets a kill with an op here on durka early on um but you know this is kind of what you will see a lot from Fnatic, right you'll get uh, a lot of defaulty looks, whatever their default kind of looks like. This is their Lotus one. So instantly, as soon as they see the op, you see this time they are quite decisive in terms of going, okay, well, let's go for a B split. We've seen the op here. We've got early space in towards A. Uh, let's go for this B, sp uh, B split early on. Uh, they throw their Viper Orb down here and they get into position to do this uh, pretty early. As you see, they send in the Prowler. Uh, they, you know, Chronicle manages to walk his way in just here and uh, in they start to come now. Bowstra actually just runs through a Viper Wall and actually gets killed there, but Chronicle gets the trade, and so we're in a 4v3. Uh, the spike is uh, going to go down when this Viper's pick goes down. And now let's take a look at this crazy post plant. The plant should be safe. Now here's the thing, fighting through a pit with this, not actually that bad. He's going to use his own, a counter pit in play. Uh, safe actually needs to stay alive here, section these players off. It, it's his position that they're most likely to be in. It's where the Viper's Pit doesn't intersect, but the spike is covered. They're able to get on it. Snake bites fired through, a little shallow actually, almost blocking them in. Oh. They, they don't want to run through and Leo's get vulnerable. Just Leo, they're good to get, to get the kill. You know, he's just being sat up close, tanking those shots through, and he'll survive even still. Again, a sliver of health. He just needs the one, and there it is from Nats. Oh, and he's got another! The Odin dropping the pit and getting the round for this squad. Oh, too often. Nats can get it. The time is close. I think he has it just no, about. No, 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 he hasn't. He hasn't. Has it's the, from the grave. Chronicle finding two. We looked at him there with Util in hand, and most of the time he'd go, what a fool. What an idiot, being caught out with a snake bite, but he fires it just before his death, and that is enough to win Fnatic the round. In terms of Fnatic's defense side, I would say for the most part, they play, you know, pretty standard. I wouldn't say that, you know, they really have like, you know, they really go all in for certain themes necessarily. Uh, on their defense side, but what I want to see from Fnatic, or what I'd be interested in seeing, is do they have more things cooked up like they did here against Sentinels for the first game of lock-in? Because this to me will be a probably a big decider in how Fnatic do at this tournament. If Fnatic have a ton of stuff that they, you know, had stored for ages and they're just waiting for Master Tokyo to show it, then I think they'll probably win the tournament. If they don't actually have those extra ideas and, and you know, really they have, you know, shown their full hand and they just, you know, have just kind of been working on perfecting those ideas, then I think they're in trouble. Because Team Liquid have already shown that, you know, that can be beaten. Um, but for instance, you know, here against Sentinels in this first game, you know, they do go for a weird idea, right? Where they go for this dart here. And we saw the teams copy this later on, right? With the breach done, the jet dash down here, the silver ult as well. Uh, you know, even Boast is going to push down short here as well. Uh, you know, kind of a weird little idea. And uh, it doesn't go perfectly for them this time. But this is the kind of idea that I want to see Fnatic run. Alpha, yeah, by the way, has picked up the operator now over on C. And a deep dash from Turkey. He's not... Wasting any time, is he? That's a deep dart as well, a set play, but it can up close and personal within the cloud burst. Takes out the threat of Durka. But a pincer attack as well. Bosler was trying to make the most of the chaos. Pushed up into, oh my goodness, into A lobby, and he's even finding a couple of kills of his own. Potentially, no. Ends up going down before he could claim the second. The trade was there. But when it comes to any stats here for Fnatic, it's just insane. I mean, their map score is way better than any other team. Like, way, way, way better. Uh, only dropping five maps and of course three of those came in the grand final against Team Liquid So that just goes to show how dominant they've kind of been uh, their pistol win rate as well is just insane I mean their, their round win rates are insanely good in terms of their map pool though And we'll get to this when we talk about the maps uh, next But I put as Lotus and Split because those are the two maps that they have played You know multiple times and not lost on yet I mean Lotus they played a ton and kept winning although it seems to be getting progressively closer as they keep doing the same stuff um, and really, Team Liquid should have beat them on Lotus, but didn't. Uh, and then the worst maps are definitely Ascent. I think even Fnatic would agree that Ascent, obviously, other than Pearl, which they permaban, 
uh, is definitely their worst map. And Fracture as well is one where somehow they only played it once, and that was, in, again, against Team Liquid uh, in that grand final, and they did lose it. I don't know how they went the whole EMEA split without having Fracture be played until the very last game. That's kind of bizarre. Um, but, yeah, that's the way it works out, I guess. And when we look at their map pool, uh, you can see that uh, Haven and Lotus tend to be, you know, pretty common picks here. Obviously, there are less picks because they were picking Icebox whilst that was still in the pool. Um, Pearl is their perma ban. They also banned uh, Split when they were playing Team Liquid in the grand final when they got two bans. Um, but yeah, you can see we haven't played Pearl at all. We've only played Fracture once. In general, they have played less maps, although they played a ton of Lotus. Um, and just kept winning on it. Uh, in terms of their comps, I would say, again, Fnatic are one of these teams where they are pretty meta. They might have, like, one agent that's a bit different. You know, for instance, Astra instead of Omen on Haven. Or, you know, they pick Cypher on Bind, but the rest is pretty normal, right? That's kind of generally how I think Fnatic... You know, they're never too far away from the meta, I guess. The pr furthest would probably be this split comp with the Omen Cypher instead uh, and a Breach Sky Raze, uh, which is kind of maybe a bit of an old school comp. Uh, but yeah, they aren't ever too far away from the meta. And in terms of their agent picks, I do think that the fact that they haven't played that many maps and they played a ton of Lotus, it basically, if you're in that Lotus comp for them, then maybe your you know pick rate will be slightly inflated. Uh, like we see a ton of raids, but not much jet. But it's not that they don't like jet. It's just kind of the quirk of how many maps they've played. You know, like Fade, again, you see a massive plus 24 because Fade is involved in the, in that uh, comp, right? And so compared to, you know, the overall averages, yeah, Fnatic's does look a bit weird, but I don't think they're this far off meta other than the fact that they haven't played Harbor once. Uh, you know, I don't think that they're really that far removed from what, you know, the normal kind of meta stuff is. It's just how the map pool has kind of shake out for them. And so when we're answering the question, how do Fnatic win Masters Tokyo? Really, I think it's actually pretty simple. They just need to play at their best because Fnatic's best, I think, is better than everyone else's best. And so if Fnatic are playing at their best... I think that they will win Masters Tokyo. Now, as I said uh, kind of earlier on, I would like to see them, you know, have those new ideas, right? Bring in those extra stuff. And I'm, you know, fairly confident they do have that extra stuff, you know, kind of lined up essentially. But, you know, I would, you know, still want to see the proof of concept essentially. But if they do have that extra stuff and if they are playing at their best, then I do think that they will be probably the favorites to win Masters Tokyo. There's still so much time though, Lauren. They are backing. Slowly but surely they are backing. Soulcast got caught, but sells them a tail, sells them a picture. They're trying to quickly pivot. Nightfall comes in, almost herding them away from that B site. Going to note them both. Redgar has to touch, just chill for a second. He hasn't got much HP to play with, so has give to it wait a moment. For the decay. And the cross is being watched. Alpha's been here. Divide. Going to go up. That's Redgar going down. And it's all on Nats. He's got his pit and he's got 25 seconds. Oh dear, there's a showstopper coming in. Oh my god. Surely the showstopper. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's Durka with the showstopper. Defending. And it's map one going to Fnatic here. Honestly, a much closer battle, a much closer affair than I thought. 